Hello everybody, I hope you all are doing well, and welcome to the next episode of Scottswood Paleo Zoo. So right here, there are three Platyosauruses in this habitat, and this is the new and, dare I say, improved Platyosaurus habitat. Um, unfortunately, the original one I made was gone, but this one, I ended up enjoy really enjoying making it, and I cannot wait to show you what I cooked up for the backstage. But yeah, so we have our two um, Platyosauruses. When I first opened up this save, I was kind of sad, you know, I was like, oh man, I lost all my original progress, but I instantly got these two dinosaurs. Um, this is a leucistic platyosaurus grassless, and then we have a, a melanistic one over there, and I instantly fell in love with them, so I knew, like, okay, this is perfect. Um, so his name is Pepper, and then her name is Paprika, and all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a tour. So across from us is the Coelophysis habitat. Oh, and um, shout out to one of the people in the comments. I cannot remember what your name was for the life of me, but you suggested that I can press T so I can move the camera and actually give ourselves a more first-person view of the zoo. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, without further ado, let's have a little stroll. So this is the first view that the guests will get. You walk in through here, and you're greeted by these beautiful dinosaurs in this very like lush and open habitat. Oh, I love that he's doing that. So we have Prika, I think she's female, and then Pepper's male, right? So you get this nice view. This habitat, I'm going to call it like the Platyosaurus Plains. Um, I know there was no grass in the, during the Triassic period, but you know, that's cool still. Um, instead, I deliberately chose not to put any um, trees in here and stick with uh, bamboo um, as like backdrop plants instead. And you'll see why in a bit, but mainly I wanted to give this habitat more of an open field than the original one was. Open but still heavily vegetated, so I relied more so on grasses and lower shrubs um, to give it that um to give it that sense of um you know being overgrown. And I really love how it turned out. So we have the Platyosauruses. We keep walking this way, and I love the way that the mud wall looks. I really hope we get like an actual in-game piece for the mud wall because right now it's um yeah right now it's uh, a bunch of stalagmites together more bamboo and then over here so recently prehistoric kingdom unveiled the cable fence and <laughs> far yeah i'm really happy they did that but um i remember the devs were like dude how did you make this and this is this fence that i made um i'm still gonna keep it here because a um uh, i find it charming you know to always make your own things and b if we go down to fence um well, let's see where is it so this is a in-game cable fence this is the smallest size you can get for it. It's 2.5 meters. Um, and I still like the way that the uh, cable fence kind of looks more so than mine does. But it is a bit, um, you know, it is a bit bigger than what I need. So, and you know, I already made this. So, really cool. Anyways. Yeah, so this was made, if you don't mind. This was made by using bollard pieces. And then these are rakes. So what I did was... Um, I shrunk the rakes down just enough um, and made sure that they aligned with the inside of the bollards and then I rotated them over and what I like about the rakes are that they have this like little metal piece at the top so it looks like an actual cable fence but I also love that they have this uh, more like muddy look to the texture and yeah let's continue on so F9 whoa pretty yeah, so now this is the second viewing of the habitat, and I really love how this looks. Oh, Paprika looks like she's coming for some termites. Wonderful. So we'll just take a minute to just chill out and watch her enjoy the food. Mm-hmm. Really good. Yep, so she seems to be having a great time. And then you can get another view of the animals from this way. And you'll notice over there there's like a dividing fence. Oh, and there's our other one. I forgot what his name is because I didn't change his name. That is Anja, or her name is Anja, sorry. So there's P Peppers are male, and then Anja and Paprika are our females. Or, yep. Oh, this is an even better view. What I love about this view, too, is you'll get to, um, you can kind of briefly see the Coelophysis habitat. And what I did for this was I took, um, this is a custom log that I made. It's up on the workshop already, so you can go uh, check that out. Um, and I made that with some of the, uh, sandblasted wood pieces that are in game and then I embedded like a flat rock um, to add some like additional texture to this hill yeah I really love how this looks 
Oh, and I guess, um, I forgot to show you guys this, but I opted for, like, a more dry moat riverbank style, like a riverbank style moat. And I really like how the way it looks, so it's as if there was, like, a dry riverbed that, uh, was around there. And, yeah, and I cannot wait to show you guys the backstage, but that's something, um, I'm so, I'm so excited to show you guys. But, yeah, so we'll get another view of the habitat before we proceed over. You can see Paprika over there enjoying her termites. Pepper's coming closer. My god, I love this, um... Oh, I should also mention that these are Platyosaurus grassless. That's the smaller species of Platyosaurus. Um, the other species is significantly larger. Um, and I wanted to keep the theming around this zoo to be centered around the more smaller animals. Um, and I think so far I've done a good job of that. But let's proceed. Down here... This is what's going to be, so I'm going to do a speed build for this habitat, but this is essentially going to be the Shalitosaurus habitat. It does have a body of water, so I'm going to make it kind of look like um, a hot spring style enclosure. Um, and then if we go back here, this is what I'm most excited to show you guys. This is the fully functional backstage that I designed. Currently, I have a version of this on the workshop where it's just a shell. So you can get a good idea of what it looks like on the inside, but you can decorate it however you want. And then over here, there's some Dryosauruses. I'm planning on doing a Dryosaurus habitat there, but I might um, actually opt them out. But anyways, so first and foremost, we come over here and we have this... Oh, another thing I wanted to show you guys before we get to the backstage is I created these... Um, so for um, rock walls, normally in zoos, especially the ones that are more like freestanding, you're going to actually have... Um, Behind the scenes, you're going to have, like, these, um, these pillars that act as support for them. Um, because most of these rock walls are usually made with, like, very strong concrete. And the reason why you don't see that around here is, A, you wouldn't want something like that in the exhibit. And, B, um, it's implied that the internal structure, um, especially here above the planter, that helps keep the structure together. So you wouldn't have to worry about, um, same with, uh, this one and this one over here. So that helps, um... Yeah, that would help keep it together, and you wouldn't need these, um... But since this is mostly, uh, freestanding, I decided to add this. Plus, it's, like, another cool little detail. Because I really can't wait to upload the zoo on the workshop once it's done, and you guys can, um, explore all these little nooks and crannies and hopefully get inspired. But, without further ado, this is the fully functional backstage, which serves as a dual backstage for both the Platyosaurus and the... Or Platyosaurus and the Solidosaurus. Um, and so here would be their barns, and I made it to where, um, you know, if you needed to separate the two, you can. Um, and then over here, you have all your backstage props. I really love that Prehistoric Kingdom gave us these pieces, because you really don't need to, um, what's the word? You wouldn't have to make something like this piece by piece, even though you absolutely could with the current pieces, so that's really nice. And then, of course, this entire backstage is functional for the um, keepers. So you have this gate right here that they can go through. And then you have these individual gates that they can go through as well. And then over here, we have our Plesiosaurus Anja. I also gave a sky skylight to some of these. That way, you know, some natural lighting can get in here. Um, and then at nighttime, if I um, switch to night mode, you'll see that, yeah... It's still relatively well lit, you know, there's implied, um, there's implied doors that, like, open and close, all that good stuff. So, yeah, this is, again, this is a shared space between the two species. Um, this right here is supposed to be, like, implied hot wire, so uh, keep the animals from, like, being a little too pecky. Um, given that this is a smaller species, though, you wouldn't have to worry about this. And so this took a lot of inspiration from, um, this build in particular took a lot of inspiration from a, um, Planet Zoo Builder. I'll link his YouTube video in the com in the description below, but basically he made a realistic backstage blueprint for people to use for um, hoofstock, so I implemented that with some minor adjustments given um, the current structure of Prehistoric Kingdom as a game, but also um, thinking about these animals in mind, what um, how they would differ from modern day animals in hoofstock. There's also another window here for additional light, uh, and of course you have your uh, air conditioning, and then you'll notice down here, I added, um, of course I added the, uh, gutters, but I also added, um, this to imply, like, um, internal, uh, to act as, like, internal water, um, implied water filtration and, uh, pumping. But yeah, let's take a look at her eating. And then, we can actually get a preview of our next animal, so I'm gonna scoot over. 
but it looks like both of them are here. So I thought it was just so cool to have like um the same bar and use for two completely different species. But that way, if you wanted to do like a mixed species habitat, you absolutely could with um something like that. Or if you wanted to do a dual species habitat where one animal's on one side and another's on the other, um, you could totally do that. And I'm really excited once I upload this on the workshop soon, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, so yeah, let's go take a look at our snoozing shalitosaurs. Aw, they're so cute. Like, I mean, this is so cool. Like, you can even see him over there. Aw, they look like little pine cones. Yep. And we, of course, we have our separation wall and all that. Um, another reason why, another reason why something like this could be good, per se, is, um, if, like, an animal is sick, for example, or if you need to separate the male from the females, um, you absolutely could, and same applies for the Solidosaurus, and I might actually be able to, I mean, I technically might have room for one more Solidosaurus, but I think two is enough, because their outdoor exhibit space is pretty small. Oh, another thing that I did, if you'll notice, there's, like, this, uh, grassy texture, um, where the bamboo is. And I figured I'll show you guys this too, but uh, it's hard to click on it. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know if it's going to appear. Here's what I'll do. So this is the, um, this is the Stone Age, um, it's the moss roof from the Stone Age pack. But yeah, so I use that to, um, basically cover up the gaps and help give it more of like a planted look and... It's a really cool technique to do if you ever want to do stuff like that yourselves, or even for, like, um, implied green roofing. You can use the Stone Age roof and then just shrink it down. But yeah, that is the Pladiosaurus habitat. I am beyond happy with how it turned out. Let's improve the lighting a bit. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave you guys with the cinematics. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one, where we will be doing a speed build for Solidosaurus. Take care.